It looks like preparations for war. Australian and Filipino troops with American support storming the beaches to battle a mock enemy that invaded Philippines territory. These are part of the biggest ever military drills between the two countries. Australia and the Philippines have probably never been as strategically aligned as we are right now. The exercises are just the start. Both sides are now talking about doing joint naval patrols in disputed waters. Does this give an impression to the Philippines government or to the Philippines people that if there was to be a conflict between them and China over disputed islands that Australia would get involved? Well, all, all we're trying to do here is to build the relationship between our two countries at a defence level, to build the habit of, of cooperation. The justification for all the military posturing lies with communities like this one. Right at the southern tip of the Philippines island of Palawan, fishermen and supply boats are preparing to head out to the South China Sea. OK, OK. OK, sir. Captain Zaldi Albi takes a boat full of diesel to the main Philippines-controlled island, Pagasa, which has troops and residents on it. It's quite scary sailing to Pagasa because sometimes they chase our boat and follow us side by side. When we stop, they surround our boat. He says the Chinese boats do eventually let them through to replenish supplies on the island. But there's another disputed reef where China's boats are more aggressive. The Chinese Coast Guard drives us away when we're passing by a Yungan Shoal. If they see us approaching a Yungan, they'll surround our ferry with their boats. A Yungan, known as the Second Thomas Shoal, is a rich fishing ground. But fishermen here claim Chinese fishing and coast guard boats are making it too hard to go there. Sometimes they use water cannons on us and they've intentionally rammed our pump boat. Second Thomas Shoal is ground zero for the tension between the Philippines and China and the skirmishes are getting worse. This year China's coast guard and militia fishing boats have been accused of swarming the shoal and using increasingly forceful methods to harass Filipino crews. Government vessels are not allowed to enter. To avoid miscalculations, leave and keep far off. With an overwhelming advantage in size and numbers, China's tolerance to keep allowing Filipino boats access to the islands appears to be wearing thin. We really need the, the international community to, to be with us in, in pushing, you know, uh, the international law. The Philippines is now sending an unlikely force to try to bolster its claims, tourists. Ken Hupanda has the unusual job of trying to develop tourism in a potential conflict zone. Uh, tourism is really an effective way of like uh, building diplomatic relations. So uh, we are not there to, to impose anything, but we're just there to, to conduct like an activity that's some sort of uh, taking advantage of uh, the resources. He's offering holiday makers a week-long trip around the Philippines controlled reefs in spite of watchful Chinese Coast Guard ships. I believe that as long as they do not block the way, then uh, we will continue with the program. China's government has defended its recent actions, accusing the Philippines supply boats of bringing building materials to the reefs and trespassing on Chinese territory. It's a battle on multiple fronts for the Philippines, which has no assurance that countries like Australia or the US would ever do anything to stop a Chinese move on the remaining islands. But it's all the Filipinos can do in their bid to keep a hold on what they say is theirs against a giant neighbour that looks increasingly confident it will get its way. Bill Bertles, ABC News, Palawan, Philippines.